What's going on, everybody? It's Monday. Time for Swift News. As always, the links to everything you see in the GitHub repo, the link to that repo in the description. Uh, if you find stuff throughout the week that you think is good for the show, tweet it out with hashtag Swift News. I check that out before I put the show together. All right, let's throw up this week's rundown and get into it. First up, I wanted to share an article about tweaking the iOS system fonts. And the point of this article is basically like the SF family of fonts that's default to iOS system is pretty flexible. You can do a lot with it. And, and don't, I'll read this, right? Before you switch to a custom font, don't overlook how much you can tweak the appearance of the system fonts. Uh, quick review of some of the font APIs uh, that work for both UIKit and Swift UI. And that's what they get into in the article. But uh, I really wanted to share this because like I always, anytime I work on an app, and you know, the designer or whoever comes at me with a custom font, I, I always push back. Now, I don't like plant my flag and start a fight over it, but I always push back a little bit and, and try to make a push for the custom, or I'm sorry, the system font. You just get a lot of stuff for free with like dynamic type. And of course you can do that with, um, you know, custom fonts, but there's just a little extra overhead. But I don't know, I just prefer to use a system font most of the time. Uh, plus it looks native to the Apple platform, all that stuff anyway. But uh, throughout this article, they talk about how, you know, you can tweak the the, the SF font, right? There's the, the typical one. You can change, uh, you know, the serif, the, the spacing, you can make it rounded, um, right? You can see various uh, ways, like this is the rounded one. I mean, it is slightly different, but you can see it also has a serif and you can do sans serif. And then I wanna show the mono space one, right? This is the mono space to give you a different look and feel. So I'm not saying you can create any design with uh, you know the system font, but I think it's a lot more flexible than a lot of people realize. And that's why I wanted to share this article. So before you immediately dive to a custom font, maybe see what you can do with the SF family. Next up, we have the uh, comprehensive guide to UI menu, and it is very comprehensive. It's very long, so I'm going to kind of skim over it a little bit. But let me show you what a UI menu is, just in case you're not familiar. It's these, right? You've probably seen these when you tap on a button and you get this drop-down menu. Uh, well, here we talk about uh, just a bunch of different variations on, on how to build this, and it is UI menu, so it isn't UI kit. This isn't the, the Swift UI menu, so quick disclaimer there. But again, super thorough action state. It talks about you know wh where does a UI menu make sense, right? You talk about this hitting a plus button, and then you get a couple different options. You've probably seen this again in other apps. Um, how to use it, uh, I'm gonna scroll down here. They show you how to use it in a collection view cell, right? Like this little GIF, right? You tap on a cell, you get the options down here. Again, very thorough how, when, where to use these type of menus. So check it out. Moving on, we have a cautionary tale from Sean Harding, right? I'll just read the tweet. How I got rejected from Apple's App Store small business program with less than $1,000 uh, in 2020 revenue, a cautionary thread. Um, so basically to sum this up, and I definitely recommend checking it out and reading through his story, but don't transfer an app or you're pretty much ineligible no, no matter what is, is what happened here. And Sean tried to do all the right things, right? He, he emailed the small business program like three times back and forth trying to get clarification because the wording was a little tricky. And, you know, finally he just, you know, went ahead and did it. And it turns out he got rejected from the small business program because he had transferred an app. So uh, again, read this, read his story. Uh, but the long story short, if you want to be eligible for the small business program, do not transfer an app. Up next, we got the Twitter wisdom portion of the show. Angie Jones here uh, tweeting out a nice thread. Uh, she got a question today. Uh, with all the information I'm learning, what are some tips slash best practices on how to retain it all, right? We've all been there when we're first learning how to code. It's like drinking from a fire hose. It's just so much to take in. How do you possibly retain all that? Well, you don't. <laughs> That's kind of what we're gonna talk about here, but what she says here, by building, like building over and over again is how you're gonna retain it all, but don't worry about retaining it all. And that's kind of what this thread is, right? And, I, and it resonated with me because this is how I create my content, right? She says, in my opinion, tutorials are to inform you of what's there and how it might apply. That's the lesson. Uh, you learn this thing exists and you know when, where, how it can be used. Right, that's what I do with my tutorials because I get a lot of comments sometimes because I keep my tutorials like pretty basic and pretty high level. And you know, I'll, I'll always get a comment like, oh, why didn't you show us how to use it in this, you know, insert very specific situation here? And you know, my response is like, well, if I did that, I, I could do a hundred different very specific situations on how to use it. And then the tutorial would be three hours long and it's just not practical. But 
it's also not practical for the student, as Angie says, is like, don't worry about like memorizing all this stuff. Like, this is the key thing. Like, you know, this thing exists and you know, like how and when it can be used and just keep that in your mind. And then when it comes time to use it, you know where to go to do more research, to learn, to dig deeper. You don't have to memorize like all the stuff. It's almost like a, like a table of contents, kind of memorize the table of contents. And then when you need it, go to that chapter and dig deeper. You don't need to dig deep in the chapter and like memorize it. That's kind of what, what Angie is saying here. And that's my philosophy on my tutorials as well. That's why I create the kind of content that I do, right? You know, for example, the, the new iOS 14 date picker in SwiftUI, a recent video I did. You don't have to know how to do that, but be like, okay, I remember Sean did a video on that. Anytime I need a date picker, I know, I know I can go to Sean's video real quick and he can show me how to use the basics. And if I need to dig deeper, I can dive into documentation, et cetera. You don't always know how to use a date picker. Next, I wanted to share a survey that Tower is doing. Um, developers on the Mac, the great survey. And really, I want to share this out of my own curiosity because, you know, there's a ton of iOS developers out there. The Mac developer community is a lot smaller. And I'll be honest, I don't know too much about it. Um, so I'm curious to hear the results of this survey. So that's why I want to share this. Um, so hopefully, if you are a Mac developer out there and you weren't aware of the survey, maybe you can fill it out. Um, they offer some prizes, right? Some nice subscriptions to, you know, Sketch. That's, you know, $99 a year. It's a nice little prize. Things, all kinds of like, free licenses to this software is what they offer uh, for, you know, taking part in the survey if you want. Um, the survey runs until April 9th and they'll announce the lucky winners April 20th, but I'm not, who, to me, who cares about the prizes? I just want the information. Like who, I wanna find out more about Mac OS development and what kind of interesting questions they have in the survey. So again, if you're a Mac OS developer, check it out. Moving on to AR Corner from Heart Woolery here. Uh, this is not AR Kit, so this is a Snapchat filter, um, but it's basically rock band uh, with your fingers in AR. Thought that was thought that was pretty cool, pretty fun. Uh, and then finally, the LOL of the week. We got two of them here. Um, you know, this guy's the real MVP here, right? The one guy who actually reads the question, and this is like. If I scroll up, you can see here, right? Internet forums for getting help. Uh, well, real quick, give some credit to Nixcraft. Uh, internet forums uh, for getting help about programming topics, basically Stack Overflow, right? All the downvotes, this is a stupid question, read the documentation, and you got you got this one guy, this superhero is blocking everything, saying, you know, hey, here's what you did wrong. Uh, this snippet should actually help you out. And you got little you there getting help. I thought that was funny. Uh, and then the last one here, and this, is, this one's so true, right? Ask a programmer to review 10 lines of code, they'll find 10 issues, right? Uh, ask a programmer to do 500 lines and they'll say it looks good, right? And this is the moral of this story here is don't submit ridiculously large PRs. You're doing a disservice to the product, to be honest with you, because it's such a large PR. It takes the reviewer so long to go through it and it's kind of confusing. Like it's just, this is what happens. You know, a super long PR, they're like, eh, okay. They start to kind of like skim over stuff. Um, and I, you know, I always get yelled at for like explaining the joke in the LOLs of the week, but I really think I'm explaining like a, the takeaway here, the lesson is just keep your PRs small so they actually get thoroughly reviewed, not, you know, huge. So people just be like, I don't have time for this. Yeah, whatever looks good. So that wraps up this week's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next week.